the praise in the house of the Lord the hallelujah praise the name of Jesus we serve a mighty God we serve a powerful God a God that is worthy of all praise glory and honor let's just give him a praise offering in the house let's just worship let's just honor him this morning he is a great God he is a mighty God he is a powerful God he's a God that neither slumber nor sleep he's a God that's not slack concerning his promises. He is faithful. He is a true and living God. I will thank God this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I thank God today. It's another day in the house of the Lord. It is the day that the Lord hath made. That our purpose to rejoice and to be glad in. He is my source, he is my reason for living, he is my joy, he is my peace. And I thank God for the, the privilege to be able to be here this morning. I count it a privilege when I come in the presence of God, knowing, amen, that tomorrow or today, not promised to me, but because of his grace and his mercies, I am here. My God, it doesn't matter the circumstances or whatever is happening. Amen. He has afforded me this privilege to be in his house, and I honor him for it. I thank God for the praise team, uh, the musicians, and for those who took the time, amen, to be in the house of the Lord, to honor him and to praise him. God is doing his work. Amen. amen. And one thing I know, as God do his work, the devil is doing his, and you know what? He's going to do what he has to do. Yes. Amen. But we must do what we have to do for the God because in all things, he must be glorified in our lives. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for everything. I thank God for what he has done thus far and what he is about to do. Amen. Do you believe that God's about to do something Amen. great in this city? Well, I believe it. I believe it. I believe God is building up. Amen. His people, his church, his kingdom. Amen. And he said he will build, amen, a car as it pleases him. Amen. amen. As long as we stay true to what he says we should do. Today I want to start a topic. I want to talk about, amen, something that is it's creating havoc in the kingdom of God. And many have been deceived. Many have been put back in bondage. Amen. And many not even sure you are saved, amen, because of the teachings out there in the world, in Christendom, amen, that has nothing to do, amen, with the New Testament church of the true and living God. And I want us to go into that a little bit over the next couple of weeks. We want to talk about it because I want us as people of God to be very clear, amen, where we are and who we are in the kingdom of God, so we are not being indoctrinated or being caught up in the things that the, the, the devil, and the plan and the traps of the devil, because the Bible says he's out there like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the question I wanna ask the church, if generational curse is existing, is still existing, is, is it still affecting us today? Can it affect us? As Christian, we want to be clear on this because if we're not clear, we're going to do things and we're going to get ripped off in the body of Christ because of false teachers that are out there having us lining up in lines to break generational curse, something that Jesus already done 
for us. Amen. Amen. So let's just stand and declare the word of the Lord. And we're going to see what the Bible has to say about it. Amen. And that we can be very clear about it. This is the word of God. God. We we'll live by the word. We we'll die by the word. This is the word of God. We we'll live by the word. We we'll die by the word. This is the word of God. We we'll live by the word. We we'll die by the word. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, mighty God, that your word, mighty God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And Father God, as we, mighty God, will speak about your word and mighty God, draw from your word today, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will open our wisdom, our knowledge, and our understanding, that our eyes of our heart will be open, Father God, and we'll get, mighty God, this into our spirit, Father God, that we won't fall, mighty God, into the trap of the enemy, but Lord, we'll stay focused on you, Father God, and the work that you have done for us on Calvary, and we just want to thank you this morning, and that you, God, will speak, mighty God, as you have never before, and Father God, your name will be glorified in Jesus Christ's name, Praise amen, praise the name of Jesus. In the New Testament, there are no emphasis on generational curse, none. There's, there are no emphasis on generational curse. Jesus, more than anyone else, dealt with demonic cases, and yet in all of the records, there is not one hint of generational curse. Jesus has dealt with so many demonic forces. Right. He has cast out demons. He has raised the dead. He has so many things happened, but he had never, ever hint or even an hint about generational curse. So I, I, want to, I wonder where is all this coming from today that wherever you go, there are teachers uh, uh, and prophets and prophetess and they're just talking about generational curse and they're trying to go back into generation you don't even know of and claim that you're cursed because of what your foreparents did. Well, I want to look at the word of God and see how that affects us because according to the word of God, in the New Testament church, in this generation, Jesus Christ had paid the price and he has taken care of all the sin and curse issues that we as New Testament church, amen, would have had to deal with. Jesus could have easily thought about generational curse in this one scripture that when he's talked about in John chapter 9, verse 1 to 13. And I want us to read this verse because this is a, was a very good example, a good place that Jesus could have taught generational curse if there was such thing. Right. Amen. So I want us to look at it in John chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. And I want us to look at this because I want us to be very clear, church, who we are, that we will not be deceived. Many are paying money for this. Many are standing in line paying $100 bills. I was in Houston, Texas, and there was a prophet from Africa in a church there, and, uh, and his name is Moses. And he prophesied so well, and he even prophesied and over my life about this ministry that, that's here today, because it was in my heart. But as he was prophesying, I knew what he was saying was true. But there comes a time in the prophecy when he switched because he had finished what the Lord has to say but he thinks that it was not enough so he wanted to continue to say more things and my spirit disagreed with everything he says after that and he would call up a line and you know we have this fancy brick that we use in, uh, in, around our gardens he actually put one out in the church and would ask people to line up and if you stand on this stone you will get ill and you have to pay a hundred dollars to stand on this stone and could you believe the amount of people standing in line to pay the hundred dollar to stand on the stone and then you have something over here that if you come on this side it will touch you and it's a 50, it's $50. So if you have this lineup and there's this $50 line, this $100 line, and it's, and so many people 
fall for it and stand in line putting out their hard earned cash for foolishness. A stone can do nothing. But yet people coming and standing on the stone, paying and stepping off and putting an extra hundred dollars to go back on it again. But the Bible says a perverse nation seek after a sign. Why? Because we have no confidence knowing the word of God for ourselves that we have the confidence to know the truth of the word of God. Because the truth of the word of God will make you free church. It will make you free. You won't get entangled in any bondage. Because the Bible says there are the false prophets are out there. False doctrines are out there and it will deceive even the very elect. So it's important that we read the word of God. So here in John chapter 9 verse 1 and 3, let's read this together. As Jesus passed, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither at this man's sin, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Here is an example. Why do you believe that the, the disciples would ask that question yes. because there were a proverb in Israel that says yes. the father has eaten the sour grape and the children steed set an hedge and the Bible said that he would follow go from the visit the third and fourth generation of them that ate him I'm going to look into that today so we can understand it so Jesus make it clear that the curse had nothing to do with past. Amen. So this man was born blind not because of any sin no. that he himself had committed or his four parents. No. But his disciples alluded to it that something had happened. And this is kind of what we do today, isn't it? Something happened to somebody where somebody have an issue, we started to think, I wonder why. Yes. I wonder who sin. I wonder where is this coming from. But here it is, this situation, Jesus said it was for the glory Hallelujah. of God. Amen. It was God allowed things to happen for his glory. To make himself manifest, to make himself known yes. who he is, that he is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Amen. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This leads me to ask the question to whether the emphasis that has developed on generational curse, it is the last or the latest fad to fleece God's people and to put God's people in bondage. And this is going on where people are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And you have a false teacher, a false prophet, a false prophet has come and tried to put curse on you. Trying to tell you that because of your great, great, great grandmother over 200 years ago had committed some sin. And today it is affecting your life. Garbage. No biblical proof for it. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Hallelujah. And we are free from the curse. Hallelujah. So we don't fall. Nobody. We cannot be under any form of generational curse. It is not for the New Testament church. I want us to understand it. Hallelujah. I don't want Southeast Open Assembly. People go standing in, in, in line trying to break generational curse. Because you might put a curse on yourself. God already, Jesus Christ already deal with the curse issue. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Don't let nobody sift your dollars. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And try to take your money falsely. There are false prophets in the world. Jesus talked about it. Yes, the last day. 
in the last days there are scuffers robbing and stealing in the name of the Lord we got to be careful hallelujah hallelujah people are there is, is there any clear teaching to show that we are ex, what we're experienced today in the body of Christ so we got to look and see if there is any clear teaching that says it is because Jesus never taught it his disciples never taught it but where is it coming from and we are in the New Testament church. Today, just about everyone has a generational curse. You recognize that? Everywhere you go today, everybody seems to have generational curse. Something that never exists or not existed in the New Testament church. Hallelujah. Bible teachers, prophets, prophets, they're making a killing of it. There's so many books written about this. How to break generational curse. Something that does not exist for the New Testament church. Hallelujah. Church of God, we need our eyes to be open. This is what Jeremiah 31 and verse 29 says. He teaches us this. In those days, they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on hedge. Verse 30. But everyone shall die for his own what? Iniquity. Iniquity. And every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on hedge. Whose teeth? His. Yours. So if you sin. Oh, hallelujah. If you sin, you're going to pay for it. Oh, hallelujah. My kids cannot pay for my sin. Oh, hallelujah. So how can my grandfather sin many years ago? And today it affected my life. When Jeremiah prophesied that it should not be done. Oh, hallelujah. So when you look, the Ten Commandments in, written in stone include generational curse. The father should sin. But the children suffered for the sin of their fathers and the third and fourth generation. The prophet Jeremiah spoke against it in his theology in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. We are in the New Covenant. We are not under the Mosaic law. Not at all. Glory. We are under the New Testament. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. As, the, as he stated, every man shall die for his own sin. The children cannot or would not pay for the sins of their parents today many are confused yes. Glory. the church of God becomes so confused with this generational curse thing that they're paying their life savings Amen. to break something that has no bearing or holding on you Amen. oh hallelujah Glory. Jesus Christ he has paid it the church had become confused and this is going on right throughout the world in churches, prophets and prophetess and Bible teachers are coming want to break curses in your life. Something that does not exist. So if they're trying to break something that's not existent, what is it doing? They're putting a curse on you. That's right. Glory. Because they're putting you in bondage. Because you live in the church of God, yeah. believe in your great, 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 great grandparents have done something and you're, it's affecting you today. Jesus. It drives fear. It, it puts you in bondage, church. We need to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. Generational curse is not for us, not for the New Testament church. It should not be named in Israel. We are spiritual Israel. We are the new covenant. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today, many are confused with generational curse. And are going into prayer lines to have these curses broken. This is not needful today, church. There's no need for it. For Jesus Christ became a curse for us on the cross. Thereby removing all curses, including generational curse. And the thing I like about the word of God, 
There's always confirmation. God's a God of confirmation. So here's Jeremiah prophesying that this should never be said in Israel. But it's not just Jeremiah God has given the word to. He has also given it to Ezekiel. Okay, so when you look in Ezekiel 18, let's look at Ezekiel 18 from verse 2 to 4. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean he that he use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying the fathers have eaten our sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on hedge. As I live, said who? The Lord As I live, said the Lord God, he shall not have. Oh my God. To use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the souls of the fathers, so also the souls of the son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. So this hope assembly, make sure you don't give your money away. The false prophet, bring it and put it in the offering plate. We're going to need it. We have bills to pay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We have bills to pay, church. Amen. Don't get in no lines. Nobody counter up no. things about your generation. Amen. Lying in the name of Jesus. Glory. Robbing and stealing. They are called false prophets and false teachers. The word of God said it should not happen anymore in Israel. All the souls he said is his. The souls of the father, the souls of the son is his. All of them is his. And the soul that sinned, it shall die it. And we, not they, hit. The one that commit the heart. They shall die. They shall be punished Amen. accordingly. Amen. Glory. So where is this generational curse coming from? It is a fact. It is something that getting people hyped and people, people are so not sure of who they are in the body of Christ that they fall for anything. People are not reading the word of God for themselves. And the Bible says, blessed are they that read. So you can understand what happened when you don't read the word of God. You go and stand in a line want to see generational curse when you're being cursed. Because when these men lay hands on you, you don't know what they're putting in you. You don't know what, they're trying to, what type of spirit they're putting in you. But you got to know for yourself that there is no such thing in this New Testament age, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. There are no generational curse because Jesus Christ he has taken us. He has taken it all for us. The prophet Ezekiel repeats the same understanding concerning generational curse and why they are not meant for the new, new covenant. In our covenant, every man shall die for his own sins. The children would not have their teeth set and hedged because of the sins of their forefathers. The Lord Jesus came to fulfill the Ten Commandments, meaning to give them a more fuller revelation or fuller interpretation. And this is what the Word of God said, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He has paid it for. Listen what Paul says. In 2 second, in second Corinthians 3, from verse 3 to 7. Let's read this and listen what Paul has to say about this. Oh, hallelujah. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the apostle of Jesus Christ, ministers by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of our heart. And such trust have we taught Christ to God war. 
Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our sufficiency is where? It is of God. Who are what? Made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter what? Kill it. But the spirit give it life. But if the ministration of death written and engraved in stone was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away with oh shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious oh hallelujah there is a lot of information spoken of here. The apostles start, start, start out by stating that we are a living epistle. Mm -hmm. Written in the heart of us. Every one of us, church of God, we are a living epistle. The gospel of Jesus Christ is in your heart. It is written not on table of stone, but on the table of your heart. This is the new covenant according to Jeremiah 31 and 31 meaning the entire gospel is written in your spirit we are not to be concerned about what was written in stone meaning the ten commandments by the finger of God brethren we are ministers of the new testament therefore we must preach the spiritual interpretation of the ten commandment and not the fleshly interpretation of the commandment for the apostle concludes the letter kills Oh, hallelujah. When we speak what was written and preach what was written and stone, we are ministers of death. Amen. Glory. That's what Paul is saying. Amen. We're a minister of death. When we're preaching, I, I imagine how many dead people are around us today. Glory. Because we are preaching dead gospel, dead, dead word. They think that doesn't give life. Amen. It's not of the spirit. Amen. It is written on the stone. It's not on the table of your heart. we got to be careful what we're teaching as pastors in the church of the true and living God. Amen. Because the Bible says, if there are the ministration of death. Yes. Whereas God has called all Christians to minister life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Which is only found in the spiritual interpretation of the Ten Commandments written God. in the heart. So we, as people of God, we can't go back into generational curses. It's not for us. It is not for us. There's no such thing in Israel, in spiritual Israel, in the kingdom of God. And then Paul goes on to say in Galatians 3 and verse 10. This is what he says. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So what Paul is talking about here in Galatians 3 verse 10, he's talking about the Ten Commandments written with, by the finger of God that is written in stone. He said if you do one, you have to do all 613. Because all the laws of Moses, you got to do them. You have to manifest them. You got to do them if you want to be right. So if you do one, you're cursed to do them all. That's what it means. When you do one, you have to do them all. You can't do one and don't do the other. You can't keep the Sabbath and don't kill, and don't kill the lamb. You got to do the blood sacrifice. You got to do everything that is required in order for us to have holiness in God. All the laws must be done if, we, if not we are cursed. Amen. One to do one. You got to do them all. Amen. That's why we are free from that curse. Amen. Are you feeling free? Hallelujah. We sing this song. We don't have to kill a lamb anymore. We don't need to drink the blood over the door. Jesus. But Jesus would have taken the place. What was Paul talking about in Galatians 3 in regard to curses? Was he talking about curse, generational curse? No, he wasn't. These verses are very specific. What this verse 10 tells us. It has to do with those who are seeking to live by the works of the Mosaic law. That's what he's telling us. We can even go further than because Paul was using it to show the Galatians 
that have nothing to be gone in their life of liberty. So God translates you out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom. You don't need to go back there. You don't need to go back under the law. You are free from the law. You don't need to go back on the keeping the Ten Commandments, the Sabbaths, and the works, and all the stuff that the rituals that has to do that. God has freed us yes, sir. from this curse Amen. that we are carrying. So we cannot go back to the Old Testament laws Hallelujah. because we are now living a life of liberty in this spirit. Are you feeling free today? Hallelujah. Are you feeling free in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. In other words, because of what the individual was doing, not because of what their ancestors had done while they were being cursed. You realize what happened here? What they were doing, it has nothing to do with the ancestral. It has to do with what they were doing. It was a personal thing. Is what you are doing. You are cursed because you are going back into something that you are not supposed to. Yes, sir. Oh my God. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're not missing a point. Amen. For it is impossible for anyone but Christ to render perfect obedience to either law. All the six the only person that came on this world, in this world, and lived and fulfilled the commandments was Jesus Christ. That's why he is the spotless Lamb of, God. Lamb of God. And what does he do? Take away sins the, the sins of the world. God. But Christ redeemed them from that curse. In that he became the curse and fulfilled the sacrificial law. The law that was required, the law that brings the curse and everything else upon us. Jesus Christ became, came and he fulfilled that law and he had become the sacrificial lamb. And he has made a complete sacrifice once and for all. And freed us from all the curse that low church of God. We don't need to go back. And let nobody bring you back under these curses. Oh hallelujah. Because Christ already paid it in full. Thus they could walk in the spirit and be free to know the blessings of Abraham. Today because of what Jesus Christ God has promised Abraham. To Jesus Christ, today we are blessed, church, and no devil can curse you. No ancestral curse can come upon you because you are translated out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, there are no generational curse. It's blessings. Oh, hallelujah. That's when, when Baal wanted to curse God's people. Oh, hallelujah. It has no effect. Because when he tried to curse God's people, it turns into a blessing. Oh, hallelujah. So you got to understand your position. You got to understand your position. Oh, hallelujah. We are the one that having curse coming on us. Because we're not living the way we are to live. We're doing the things that God says that we should not do. And therefore, it's bringing a curse on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. We're blessed people. Oh, hallelujah. We are blessed people. We sing the song, I am blessed. And highly favored. Oh, hallelujah. I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We are blessed people, church. Kingdom citizens, you are blessed. Don't go stand in no line to break no generational curse. And anybody try to tell you that your forefathers have committed some sin. Oh, hallelujah. And try to connect you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Try to wake up the dead. Try to bring you back into history. Into things that was forgotten. And try to cast bondage in your life. You walk around every day thinking and wondering what sin did my great 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 grandparents did that is affecting me today 100 years ago. <laughs> Rebuke them openly. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's 
I used to go to a church in Calgary. And I went to the church, this pastor man, the big overseer. <laughs> big overseer that oversee all the, the, the body of these churches. And he was in here preaching. Oh, hallelujah. Tried to put God's people under bondage. And I remember after service, I went up and I said, man, what are you doing? I said, why are you doing this to God's people? Why do you want to put God's people back in bondage? Why, are you, why did you use the scripture that way? Turn it around to please you. That's not what the Bible is saying. Oh, hallelujah. The man looked at me. And he said, I could have preached it any way I want to, but it's the way I choose to. I said, yeah, you'll do it because you want to put God's people in bondage. Because you want to take the people's money. But I said to him, listen, God, every dollar you rob from these people and you put it in that pocket, there's going to be a hole in that pocket and everything's going to run out. So you bring it in, so it's going to fall out. It's not going to be of no effect to you. He said, what is your name? I said, my name is Aaron Livingstone Russell. Oh, hallelujah. Because I know the word of God. And I don't fear to talk to people about the things of God. No preacher, no prophet, no prophetess going to put me in bondage. Because I know the word of God for myself. Nobody can tie me up with the things of God. With the work of God. That's why I encourage my brethren to read the word of God. Because the Bible says, bless are those that read. And when you read, it's a blessing in itself. Because no Nobody can deceive you. Amen. The church has been deceived by false teachers and false prophets. These people suffer. Suffer, church. The church of God, the body of Christ, is suffering because they lack the knowledge of the word of God. My God, church. We are suffering. Because we lack the knowledge. Amen. And we're allowing people to put curse on us. Yes. Laying their hands on us. Glory. Transmitting demonic forces yes, on you. Yes. Cause guilt in your life. Amen. Cause fear. Yes. Oh hallelujah. In your life. Yes. Cause bondage in your life. Because you're standing in a place yes. that you don't need to stand. Because there are liars and in the church of the living God and we got to know the word of God for ourselves the Bible says they come in wolves clothing they come like sheep but they are wolves oh hallelujah they dress like a God, like angel of light but in their raven devils they are wolves they are just out to save God's people robbing and stealing in the name of the Lord church of God it's time the church of God open up your eyes wake up and get rid of all these prophets and prophets that coming in your churches and putting your people in bondage by trying to break something that's not dear. How can you break something that does not exist in the New Testament church? It's time the church of God wake up. Wake up. Hallelujah. I am saying then that there are no, absolutely no instance in the New Testament where someone from a previous generation were cursed. Not one. Not one. Yeah. So where does it all come from? Why are you walking around feeling guilty? That my dad was a sinner and he did this and he did that and because they did that it's, I, I, that's why I'm doing it. No. You're doing it. You might have been in the environment. Yes, sir. Glory. That's right. Yes, sir. Glory. Yeah, that's Glory. right. That's right. Praise <laughs> God. You might have grown up with your dad beating your mother. Glory to God. You've been in the environment and you see it. It's not a generational curse. It's just a lifestyle. Yes, sir. That you adapt. Yeah. Glory. <laughs> that's right. Your mother maybe was a thief. Are doing some other stuff, but because you're in the environment, Glory. and that's the, what you know, yes. mm -hmm. Glory. you decide you're gonna do it. That's right. But the day you get the knowledge, <clears throat> Glory. 
that what mommy did and what daddy did is not right. The way they live their life is not according to our constitution. And we get the knowledge that we must make a change when you come in contact with the word of God and the spirit of God. You stop walk the way that the environment want you to walk. You stop walk the way the world want you to walk. Because now I'm going to start walking in newness of life. I'm going to walk with the authority of the word of God. I know I can steal. I know I cannot beat my wife. Because the Bible says I must love my wife. Just like oh Christ loved the church. I'm not going to put my kids up down. Because God said I should not provoke my children to rot. I know these things. So because I know this thing. I'm going to walk the way God want me to walk. And blessing is going to come into my life. And nobody, nobody can allow curse in my life. Except you. Except you. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you. God. So don't tell me I'm doing this because my daddy did it. Glory. You choose to be a sinner because the word of God is here to help you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You just need to apply it. Amen. Praise God. But because our training and our teaching in the environment that we were raised in yes, is so strong mm-hmm. that bad habits yes. are hard to break. Amen. It only take the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. The spirit of God. Amen. The power of the most high God. Hallelujah. To bring you and build you up and allow you to move away from those bad attitudes that you have developed around the people that you are grown up with and now you got to be a change in your life and you got to make that change consciously oh hallelujah that your life will never be the same I don't need to be like my father I don't need to be like my brother. I don't need to be like my sister. I don't need to be like my friend. Because I have a heavenly father. I have an example in the word of God. That I need to allow myself to walk and to shape my life. So he is my king. He is my director. He is my source. He is my role model. He is the one that I want to pattern after. He had paid the price Amen. in full. Amen. I don't need to walk around Amen. thinking that my parents did something and it's affecting me. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Church of God, it's time. Our eyes open. To the truth of the word of God. Because the Bible says if it's possible. The devil. Will even. Pull the wool. Over the elect eyes. And none of us is exempt. Many a time because we want so much. We get deceived. Sometimes we sell out our salvation for nothing. Because we want what everybody else has. And we end up getting a curse. Walking with guilt. Walking in fear. Trying to go back and dig up stuff. About your grandparents, great grandparents that not even exist. Uh, oh, mercy, Lord. In the New Testament, there are a lot of verses that has to do with curse. And not one of them is generational curse. Thank you, Lord. 
Giving blessing when cursed by another person. Matthew 5 verse 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This is hard for us. <laughs> this is hard for us, eh? Those who are cursing you, those who are telling lies in you, those who are doing all this. The Bible says, come on. They are your enemies, but guess what? You should you need to bless them. <laughs> because you know better. You know where the you know where the blessings come from. You're connected to the source of the blessing. So you don't need to accept their curse because their curse cannot do nothing to you. <laughs> so in return, give them some blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. They want to curse you. But God said, no, you know that, that curse not, can't do you nothing. It has no dominion over you. So you have what they need. So give them some of what is important. Because the curse cannot touch you. <laughs> so give them some blessing. Praise God. Yeah? More blessings again, eh? Luke 6, verse 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Romans 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. We are all about blessings. Amen. Isn't it, church? Mm -hmm. That's what we are here to bless each other. Yes. Bless everyone that comes around you. Should feel the blessings of God, Amen. even though they want to curse you. I know what that feels like. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Oh God, I won't go there. That's right. But I know what it feels like when somebody want to curse you. Yeah. But they have to turn around and bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I shared this testimony. I worked for a company many years ago. Many years ago, and for many years, uh, I wonder why they never called me back. But I guess I didn't fit in their little mold. But one day, something happened. They think my name came up. Huh? My name came up. And because of my name that comes up, Today, the owner looked at me and said, I got your back. <laughs> I have your back, bro. You can stay here as long as you want. If you want to stay here until you want to retire, I got your back. Huh? Who is that? Jesus. Hallelujah. Many would probably won't, don't want me to be there. But the boss said, I got your back. <laughs> I'm talking about the owner. <laughs> so you can you you can't do nothing to hurt me. Because he has my back. Amen. But you might want to see me go. Yes. But he has my back. Yes. The only person can hurt me. Yes. Is me. Amen. So it is with our daddy. Yes. It's only us. Can hurt ourselves. He has our back. He said he will not allow my foes to rejoice over me. What he's trying to tell me, he has my back. Glory to God. So I don't worry about anything. If he says, 
That's what it is. He has my back. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Jesus. A couple more verses and I'll leave it off here for today. Curses concern Simon. Simon, Matthew 26, verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Remember that? He was denying Jesus. Hallelujah. Mark 14, 71. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom he speaks. He was denying Christ. He was doing everything. But is that generational curse? No. Not generational curse. Hallelujah. Amen. Curse upon living being are an object by the Lord. Matthew 7, 15, verse 4 says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father, and mother. And he that cursed father and mother, right. let him do what? Who's doing it? Not man, is it? No. God said, yes. He said, if you right. don't do this, I'm the one. That's right. Not no generation. No. He is the one. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that cursed father or mother shall die the death. That's what God is saying, not man. When God put a curse on you or says something is going to happen because you disobey his commandment, it is going to happen and nobody can stop it. That's not generational curse. God is saying, That's what I want you to do. Honor your mother and your father. That your days may be long. If you don't do it, then I can cut you off anytime. He's the one that's going to do it. Amen. Huh? Praise God. Mark 7.10 For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whosoever curse it, our father or mother, let him die the death. Mark 11.21 And Peter called him to the remember and said unto him, Master, Behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered mm -hmm. away. Yes, Lord. When God do something, it, it's easy that do the curse. There's no generational thing happening here. So the God, the person we need to fear is God. Amen. He's the one that can bless and he's the one that won't curse. And when he curses, nobody can break it. That's right. No prophet, no prophetess, nobody can break that curse. When he places it on you, it's there and nobody can take it out. Right. Mama, Papa, it doesn't matter. No prophet, no prophetess, no preacher can take it off. When God put his lay his hands on you, he lays his hands on you. Unless he choose to take his hands off because you repent, yes. guess what? Glory to God. It stays there Amen. until you come to submission yes. of who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, grace God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Acts chapter 23, verse 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews binded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would never eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. Amen. See? It's again, it's, a, it's the people around you. It's not nothing to do with the relatives. Generational curse does not exist in the New Testament church. Praise God. Church of God, I want you to get this in your spirit. Don't go stand in no line and let nobody lay no hands and you see they're breaking curse. And you go in your purse and scrape out the last dollar. The thing that amazes me, right? It, it always amazes me that you go to a church and you collect an offering. Right? And you think that the, there's no more money, right? <laughs> but as soon as they call up the line, a perverse nation seek after a sign That's right. so they know when the prophet and the prophetess come they expect something to happen yes. so they all about their money because they know they're going to be a lineup Thank you, Jesus. to the point that uh, even in the churches today they're having a lineup yes. how is that possible right. you, you know, we are, we're doing so many things in the church that's not of God that's right. That's right. you're calling for offering in your congregation and because you have a guest speaker in the house, you're trying to tell people to stand up and farm lines. 
All the hundred dollar line here, the twenty dollar line there, the fifty dollar line there, that's not godly. It is man-made thing. Glory. It's fleecing God's people. Glory. If somebody want to give, let them give freely. That's right, because it's between them and God. Praise God. That's right. The people should know and have the heart to bless God's people. Amen. You don't need to wring it out of them. No. You don't need to create sin in the church to profit for profit or gain. That itself is a curse on God's people. Amen. You're fleecing the sheep of God. God not pleased. It will never happen in Southeast Hope Assembly. Glory. When you come, you better know your heart. If you can, if you, what, what, that you can give what God has placed in your heart. Amen. It's between you and him. And if you hold back on him, he's the one going to hold back and you have nothing to do with it. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Who do you think give you a job? Amen. Who do you think the one give you a raise? Yes, Who the one you think give you a vehicle to drive and you never broke down for years? Yeah. Never have issues. Mm -hmm. When other people are running around fixing cars and paying bills. Who do you think keep your health that you don't have to run in and paying medical and medication bill and stuff like that? Who do you think doing all that for you? When you try to hold out on him, you realize you, you end up spending more money on your vehicle. You spend more money in the doctor's office. It, your money goes like nothing. <laughs> but when you give like you give to a king. He takes care of you. I'm just going to give a couple more scripture on this and I'll, I'll close here. So James chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. Wherewith bless ye God, even the fathers, therewith curse we men, which are made of the solitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things are not to be so. People of God, please read the word of God. Understand the word of God. Don't get caught up in the fad of what's happening and the hype of what's happening and giving away your hard earned cash and some guy looking at you and laughing at you. Oh man, these people, I wish they would read the word. Let us read the word of God and know the word of God so that we don't get sift or fleece or put in bondage by false teachers, false prophets and prophetess. They are the only one benefiting. God tells us that we need to be vigilant. We need to be aware. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. He's out there like a roaring lion. Seeking who may devour, and he is robbing and stealing in the name of the Lord. God. You know, it might look as if our, as a ministry, as, as we are, if we realize I'm very peculiar with who come in this house. Very peculiar. Because I'm responsible for your soul. If you go out and pick up stuff, then when you come here, you need to be healed. Glory to God. But I'm not gonna break, I'm not gonna infest you here. This is supposed to be a place you get healed and get delivered. Wherever you come from and you come into this house, you need to be healed, be delivered through the word of God. Praise God. Because it's crazy what's going on out there in the world today. Do you know that church? Amen. 
It is crazy what's going on out there today. It's all about money. It's not about the souls of men, church. What did Jesus die for? For financial gain? Or for the souls of men? He died to reconcile us and bring us back into a right relationship. When you're in the right relationship with God, you will know God for yourself. When I preach, you must confirm the word, not heiresses. That's why I ask you to read your Bible so that we can communicate. Because when you're reading and I'm communicating, we can agree. We can agree because you're reading. You're confirming. You're confirming. Yes, this is what the word says. Yes, what the word says. And it's building up your faith. Faith coming by hearing? Yes. By hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. This is not one way street. This is not my show. Hallelujah. This is something that we all are working to be get, getting better. To build our relationship. Gaining knowledge in the things of God. It is not just me. It is all of us. And we need to equip ourselves in the day that we are living in. God bless you. God, bless. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In this world that we are living in, God give you peace. Love you all and God grace be with you. Bless you. Bye, Bye. Bye.